Hello world! Today's topic was brought up during one of our Tales of Tech streams, as many things usually are, and it got me thinking about a topic that I'm kind of passionate about, which is when should we really be introducing technology to kids, and what kind of limits should we be putting on it? Doesn't really necessarily have to be decided by me, as in I am not a father, though recently I did become an uncle, so I've definitely been thinking about how are human beings going to behave around this new internet, with plenty of sites that are fairly informative and entertaining, and plenty of areas Areas that you should never go to. How do we let the next generation know about this new technology that is bringing people together and can teach you things and have more knowledge and information that you could ever dream of, but at the same time be responsible and be careful about it? Where do you draw the line? Some people have different ideas of when they're going to give smartphones to their kids, or other people just say they'll figure it out, okay? I'm just gonna give my kid whatever, and they'll find the bad sites and they'll find the good sites, and I just have to leave it to them. See, I kind of consider myself in one of that last child childhood kind of generations because when I was growing up, at least through elementary school and middle school, I did not have a smartphone. The closest thing I had to that was an iPod, not even one running iOS. I'm talking about an iPod Nano. So I could play music on it or maybe a couple games, but that was really about it. No internet access. And if I wanted to access the internet, I of course had to use the family computer that we would all jump on and lots of people would be sharing that. It wasn't really in my bedroom. So it wasn't like uh, I had unlimited access. I was fairly limited with it, could only use it for an hour or two a day, so it wasn't like I had unrestricted access, but what I'm getting at is that most of the time I was playing outside. I was playing with my friends or my sister. We had neighbors that we were really close with, and we would always have imagination time in the backyard where we'd play Lord of the Rings or The Matrix and just kind of shoot each other with sticks and pretend pine cones were hand grenades and stuff like that. It was fun, and we were okay with that. You know, there wasn't some smartphone I was looking forward to getting. It was just, that's how I grew up. You know, computers were there, they were fun, but they were definitely not all the rage. And now I'm worried that technology and its ease of use is becoming a new element of our childhood. As I'm seeing quite honestly, a lot of the time when a parent wants their child to be quiet, a lot of the times the best solution they have is to hand them their phone and they'll usually pull up their own YouTube video. Most of the time it's not even a bad YouTube video. They're just watching some cartoon show. And I've even seen this with two to three year olds that just know how to use that YouTube app. They know exactly where to find their channel and that becomes their babysitter. It's extremely convenient to the parent. If you're in a social situation and you need your child to be quiet, it can act like a pacifier. You just hand them their phone and they're just out. They're focused on that. They don't care about anything else. But what worries me is what if that becomes the crutch to a lot of the next generation of people? They just become so accustomed to, even if I'm in a social situation, if I'm not interested in what's going on, I can simply just plug into the device, look at it, and that's that. Which I think could, of course, lead into some development issues in the future, meaning that you become nearly inseparable from your phone. Because a lot of the time, when you're growing up, you're a baby, you don't know much, you're crying, and the only thing you get used to stopping you crying is that smartphone playing a YouTube video. It's a little bit different than sucking your thumb, something I did, or a pacifier, because those, when the kid grows up, you can wean them out of it pretty quickly. You can say, okay, you're old enough now, you don't need to keep sucking your thumb, you can grow up from that, you can move into other things. However, smartphones, I'm fairly confident, are here to stay, and I can also say that I believe that all of the next generation is going to be owning some type of smartphone device. So this isn't something that's very easily grown out of for a lot of kids as in you can't really use the argument that that's what babies do or that's what you did when you were a kid it's time to grow up and move on I think most of the time you're going to be having a smart device on you and I'm concerned that a lot of this next generation that grew up with smartphones and tablets around them at all times and are used to them being their babysitter as in if I'm not interested in the people around me I don't want to be here then I can simply resort to my phone watch that and that's not considered rude that's just what they're used to I don't know about you guys but when I was little I was shy, especially when my parents were introducing me to new people, new family friends that I didn't know before. And one day my mom and dad just said, look, don't get quiet, don't look away, don't ignore them. If we're introducing you to someone, it's because we've had good experiences with them and we're friendly with them. So the very simple solution is to just treat them friendly back and they'll be nice to you. And they trained me at a very young age to say that if you're meeting someone new, you extend your hand, you say, hi, my name is Drew, and you shake their hand and you ask them how they're doing today. And it's not even necessarily because you're genuinely curious. That is just a polite gesture and they'll probably do the same to you in something that they didn't teach me but I learned from experience just because at the young age of around eight or nine I was accustomed to when I walked up to a stranger extending my hand greeting them and telling them my name I got used to that and I also figured that even if you are not having a good day even if you don't want to be there even if you're annoyed you can at least have the respect the common courtesy to say that yeah my day is going great even if you feel dead inside I still do that to this day people ask me how I'm doing I'm not gonna say ah oh, I'm stressed out and I want to die you just 
say I'm doing well. You don't say how you're actually feeling. It's just being polite. And I know a lot of people that don't do that. And I'm aware that not everyone has that experience with their parents of telling them how to treat strangers or people they're being introduced to. I'm perfectly fine with that. But what I'm worried about is seeing a lot of distant friends. And when I see a lot of people in public now or a lot of distant friends and family that have a child with them, and instead of getting them accustomed to scenarios where they're around new people, when they're around different environments, instead of trying to confront them head on and introduce themselves and say who they are and ask them how they're doing, they've simply result to when's the next time I get to access a phone? I want to play a game on the phone. I want to use YouTube. That is the go-to solution to any time I am bored. That's what I'm worried about, is that we're going to have a lot of people in the next generation who don't know how to responsibly use their technology, which means knowing when to use it, as there are plenty of applications and when it is useful, and also knowing when to put it away. It is very tricky to remind people that, you know, if you're in a social situation and you just pull out your phone and start ignoring everyone, it can be considered very rude. And especially in the future, if everyone's doing that, I would hate it to become the norm that we all stop having human interactions and the only interactions we have are on our devices. I want the next generation to be brave and to be bold. And if they have things they want to say or people they want to meet, they should go out and find them. They shouldn't be Google searching for them on their phone constantly. And I understand that a lot of people watching this channel may be married or may be having kids on the way or have kids already. So I had a few recommendations and I understand completely if you want to ignore them. I'm not a father. I don't know what it's like. You are completely in the right if you tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. But this is just a theory I have and something I would likely employ on my own children. And this kind of brings it full circle to the technology bit. But I understand not everyone would be able to afford this. Maybe down the road, perhaps you don't have kids yet, but you're thinking about how to handle technology with them. When do you give them a smartphone? I can understand the appeal because you want to know where your kid is. You want to be able to contact them. And at the same time, it makes a very good Christmas present or a birthday gift. As soon as your child sees that you got them an iPhone or an iPad, they're going to be very, very grateful. So I can understand the appeal of giving your children smartphones. When I was little, basically no one had phones and I didn't even have a cell phone until I was in high school. So I didn't really have that device to escape on. And by the time I did, I'd already been accustomed to introducing myself to strangers and being polite about it. And technology was never an escape to me. It was really cool and really exciting. And I've wanted an iPhone for a long time, but for years and years and years, my parents always warned me, we don't want you to get that phone because then you're going to be texting at the table. You're going to be ignoring us. And I had to convince them when I got it that no, no, I won't do that. I promise. I really want this device. I will use it on my own time, but I will not use it at the dinner table. I will not use it during family discussions and I will not use it as an escape during family gatherings or social gatherings. And they were hesitant for a long time, but eventually they caved and said, okay, you're a freshman in high school. You can go ahead and buy your own iPhone 5. So I did and I handled it very well. And eventually all of them bought their own phones, proving that once you know how to handle it responsibly, technology can be a useful tool and not a distraction. So my recommendation, this is my idea, and I think I brought this up during a tech stream, is that instead of giving your young child, whether they're in kindergarten or middle school, a smartphone up front, my idea would be to get them a cellular Apple Watch because wearables are extremely limited in what they can do. For one, on the Apple Watch, there is no internet browser. So if there's certain sites you're worried about your kid going to, they would not be able to access them. YouTube is also not in the Apple Watch, so they could not find all of those great Minecraft Let's Plays and watch them for hours on end. That's not possible. With a few exceptions, there's pretty much no games you can play on the Apple Watch. There's a couple on there, but of course, you can decide what apps are on there. If they don't have access to the iPhone, it is partnered with. My theory that, again, might not be very practical for a lot of people who are trying to save money, but is that you could have a cheap, cheap iPhone. All you got to find is an iPhone 6 or an iPhone SE. Something basic that you don't plan on really giving to them that often or maybe even at all. I probably wouldn't ever let my kid have access to the actual device that has their phone number on it, but I would pair a cellular Apple Watch to that smartphone and then keep that iPhone SE or iPhone 6 or whatever at work in a drawer locked away. They don't have access to it, but via that phone number, they have the Apple Watch on. And that means that if I need to, I can go in to find my iPhone and find where they are. In case of an emergency, they can contact me. I can still text them to let them know when I'm going to pick them up, whether it's at school or their friend's house. It's very applicable. And the cellular Apple Watch has been great for that. And what I've noticed about the cellular Apple Watch is that it minimizes what you can do. You know, you can't be browsing. There's very little toying around your kid could do on here. You know, when I was young, I had an iPod, so I could even understand that. And you can pair Bluetooth headphones to the Apple Watch. So then they have a method of playing music if they're doing homework or they're outside and they just want to listen to stuff. They have that option. But of course, I'd still recommend having you have that sit down talk with them to say that we don't want you to use this as an escape. This is a simple tool and we need to know where you are at certain times, but don't let it absorb you. Don't
Don't let your whole life revolve around this. And then, of course, I'm never saying that they cannot have any access to YouTube or the internet. I'm saying that that should be very supervised as the internet is an increasingly dangerous place. Just hearing about some of the crazy videos that are on YouTube Kids is frightening to me. Hearing about what kind of crap you can easily find on kid-friendly websites is very terrifying. So perhaps I would let them borrow my iPad for a little while if they just wanted to experience what like a true iOS platform is like for a little bit. As long as you're in the room, you know what they're watching, you know what they're going on. Or perhaps if you think they absolutely need a smartphone if they need a camera or something or, or whatever, don't let them have access to the charger. Meaning that every single night, as soon as the phone battery died or it needed to recharge, you had to take it back from them. That way they can't lock themselves in the room and then just do whatever they want on there, go to all the bad areas. So that's just some of the rules I would apply on my own family. I think that the Apple Watch is a great device and I think it's a great compromise because while not being a distraction, it can also be a great communication tool or emergency feature if you need to know where they are. And at the same time, you could provide incentives for your kids to even close their activity rings. Be like, Jeffrey, you can't have dessert until your exercise ring is closed. And then that encourages them to play outside or go for a run or climb trees or whatever kids do. Explore the world. Enjoy what's around you. Don't necessarily be so dwelled into technology and YouTube and Netflix that you forget what's right in front of you. And I'm worried that the next generation is going to have a really hard time dealing with when technology is appropriate and when it is not. If you're an older person watching this and you feel like kids around you are too sucked into their phones or too sucked into the internet, I'm fairly certain that this is only going to get worse as time goes on, which sucks, but it's just what I think will happen. It's definitely not what I want to happen, but it's hard for me to deny that we're going to have a hard time with social interaction in the future. And you're on YouTube right now, so all I'm saying is don't use online media, don't use your technology to avoid others. Use it at appropriate times and put it away at inappropriate times. That's all I'm saying. And I think that deep down you know when it's okay to use and not use technology. Even if you don't like talking to your family, if you try to get into a discussion, try to find things that you can relate to or have a topic discussion on, and then you'll learn a lot more about them and about yourself in the long run. Don't result to, well, this conversation is awkward or, the, oh, these people aren't fun, therefore I'm going back on my phone. Don't do that. And try to teach that to the next generation as all of us, whether we be parents or yet to be parents, try to teach that to the next generation because they're definitely going to have it a lot harder than we did because when we were kids, we didn't have some smartphone that could be in our pocket at any time that had unlimited access to the internet. We didn't have that option. Now that very, very young children are going to have that unlimited access, it's important that we teach them how to handle it responsibly. Thank you guys for watching today. I hope you got something out of that. And again, I'm not a parent, so of course, if I'm wrong about something, I, I totally respect that. My opinions may change when I'm actually a parent. We'll see. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an excellent day. Take care.